now we're going to build the frames that will form the inner structure of the carcass and form a, a rectangle that's a, that will be the structure of the carcass. The frames will tie these pieces together. There'll be four frames, one here, second, third, and the fourth here. And those frames will be attached to the side, and actually they will be a four-sided frame, so they will form, form the rest of the structure of the carcass. But now, when these rails are mounted, we're creating a cross-grain pattern. The grain in the sideboard runs this way, the grain in the cross rails runs this way. If the side panels were to expand and contract because of moisture differences, you could possibly get cracking or some joints pulling loose. So we'll mount these side rails to accommodate for that movement. The front end of the rails will be attached rigidly to the carcass and the rails will be let into a mortise so they'll fit in fairly tight. But the back screws will be in slotted holes so that the side pieces can expand and contract due to moisture changes. These will be the front rails that go between the drawers and you notice the ray flake pattern. That's the decorative element. The secondary wood which is poplar. Alright, there'll be these rails will mount here, 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 and down here. And that will pro provide the flow of the wood grain pattern down the front of the cabinet also. using an Incra gauge miter gauge with a shop stop on it to set the length for the rails on the front of the cabinet. And each one will be cut to 18 and 3 30 seconds between the legs. I'm going to cut this first one that I'm dovetailing to the top to form the top bar of the carcass. So this cut will be 
a little longer than uh, the final length to allow room for the dovetails. Before making my cross cut, I double checked the dimensions and found a mistake. I had set the shop stop for 18 and 3 30 seconds and it needed to be set for 19 and 3 30 seconds. So that would have been a costly error, but uh, now with the setup corrected, I'm ready to make the cut. Now you can see I've already cut dovetails on one end of the piece and I did that so I could verify exactly what the length of the tail was going to be uh, using uh, the jig that I'm using and uh, that way I'd make the board the right length. So this board, the tails cut on the other end, will form the final width for the cabinet. The next piece of the drawer frames is going to be made up of pieces of poplar and the idea is I have a tenon on one end and I'm going to cut a groove in these and insert that in to make the frame. Originally I was going to make these tenons uh, an inch long but I decided to go down to probably a quarter of an inch because I didn't want to groove as deeply into these boards. So uh, that's the mission now is to get this dado centered on this board. Uh, I'm going to make just a test cut on this board and see if I have it a half or excuse me a quarter of an inch from that edge. And I know it's too high at this point, so I'm just going to drop it down, creep up on it. Okay. I am about a sixty-fourth over a quarter of an inch on the difference on the, the thickness from the front fence to the blade and the groove is a little less than a quarter so I guess my dado sets off let's see how these fit okay that'll fit fine and if I put the pieces together that's fairly flush so that seems like pretty good fit Within a 64th, so I'm going to leave that. That's good enough. Good. The next step, I'm going to cut some dados in the back of the, or the inside of these two cabinet pieces uh, for the drawer runners that will go on in the future. So the way I like to do that, in order to get <coughs> accuracy, on both boards and to carry the uh, pattern from the from the workpiece to the saw is to make a story stick. So this board here is going to be a story stick. Then I'm going to transfer marks from the sides to the stick that I will then use to set the, the uh, rip fence on the saw. So I've marked here, here, and here for the grooves 
that will hold the drawer support runners. Here, I'll just make a mark for the top, the top mark of each of each groove, and that will that will be the um, position of the saw blade. One. The three positions for the drawer slides. And I'll just double check them. Good. Good. All right. Now I'm going to set up the rip fence to cut the grooves on the side pieces. So I use the story stick, and the mark on the story stick is for the top of the groove, so that'll be the side closest to the fence. So I'll match up this mark with the tooth on that side of the fence. Okay. So that will be the first cut. Let me check it. That's right. go. One, two, three slots for mounting the drawer slides. There's a number of other fabrication steps that will be shown in the next videos, but I thought I would give you a preview of the finished carcass assembly with this photo at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel.